Welcome back dudes, it's great to see you, I hope you're all doing incredibly well. In this video, we're going to transform this beating up Epiphone SG Modern into a complete monster. Recently, I bought this Epiphone SG Modern for what I thought was a bargain price. Well, as it turns out dudes, you get what you pay for. From the pictures and the listing, this guitar looked to be in great shape. There were only minor signs of play where everything was listed as working. It just seemed like it needed a little bit of TLC and then it was good to go. Well, the guitar arrived and let's just say the pictures didn't tell the whole story. <laughs> The amount of swirling and scratches on the finish is terrible, there are dents and chips everywhere, and the neck pickup cover is dented? I don't know how you'd even do that. Also, that dented neck pickup doesn't work, so the electronics are fried somewhere. Because this was a private sale online, I basically got no comeback, I'm stuck with the guitar. But, I sat with it, I played it for a little while, and... Ultimately, I decided I didn't want to get rid of it. The actual bones of the guitar are really good, it plays really well, and I actually feel bad for it that it got so abused by its last owner. So, it seems like a massive shame to just leave it in a cupboard and let it die off. So instead, I'm going to take you along with me while I restore and modify this into an absolute beast. Hold up. Sorry to interrupt like this, Jack from the future here. I realise now I sounded fairly confident saying all that stuff, but actually this project turned out to be pretty difficult and a little bit sketchy. Actually, you're about to see one reason why in just a second. But I love to mess around with guitars and learn new stuff, despite not actually being a proper restorer or resprayer or anything like that. One thing I can say is that it is much more difficult than regular maintenance, and I learned quite a lot throughout this build, which I'll talk about throughout. For now though, let's have a look at what happened when I opened this thing up. Okay, so the mystery continues with this SG. I'm just dismantling it, ready to take it and get sanding. And I found something weird. Let's have a look. Look at this wiring. What is that? It looks like it's been replaced for like an entire solderless system. My God, there's no wonder stuff's not working right. This is coming out. This has got to come out. Ooh. Ugh. And it got even better, and by better, I mean worse. <laughs> these are the pickups that I pulled out of the thing, and if the wiring wasn't the problem, then these definitely were. Look at the state of these. At some point they've obviously had the covers pulled off, and not very carefully, because the soldering is absolutely mangled. But at least now we know the reason for the dented cover. As well as that though, previous owner obviously wasn't too careful taking the covers off or putting them back on, because the windings are absolutely wrecked. <laughs> this poor guitar dude. And now I've got my hands on it. <laughs> You know what dudes, I don't know how people hold their cameras up like this all the time to do vlogs. We're in the garage and this is where I'm going to be spending most of the next few days working on this guitar. What we're going to be doing is sanding the body back so that we can respray it. Then we're going to be sanding the neck all the way back to wood so that I can tongue oil finish it. As well as that, it's going to be getting all new electronics from EMG, so new wiring, new pickups, the lot. Oh, it's getting all new hardware, so we've got Tone Pro stuff for the bridge and then some locking tuners and all that's going black. And I'm putting a battery box in it as well so that we've got somewhere for the battery for the EMGs. So I'm pretty excited. I think it's probably about time we cracked on. Sanding was hard work. Aside from the flat top and back, the majority of the sanding was done by hand. And let me tell you, I burnt a lot of calories. The hardest section was the neck. I knew I was gonna have to hand sand this from the start, but getting through all that poly was a tough gig. All in all, sanding only took a couple of hours, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but spraying was a different story altogether. So, guitar's taped up. Um, you might notice what I'm doing with the neck joint, doing that sort of diagonal cut. Hopefully that might make that neck joint look a bit cool. But also it's to cover up sort of a bit of nastiness from the sanding. So I'm going to put my mask on and I'm going to get spraying. Well, it's been a few weeks now and the guitar is finally sprayed, but it did not go according to plan. <laughs> I do have some experience spraying guitars. Not much, mind you, but some. The problem I faced with this guitar was the paint I chose because it's a metallic. In my naive head, because I've only ever used flat colours previously, this will be exactly the same. Well, as I learnt from this experience, you've got to spray it completely differently to get an half decent finish, or at least I did. When I sprayed the guitar from a distance that I'd normally spray at, the flake in the paint created a really rough finish that when you tried to sand it back flat, came up with this almost silvery grey 
color. That obviously means I had to spray it again and I just got the same problem. I went through a couple of days thinking, is this dust? So I hoovered the entire garage, not with like a normal hoover, mind you, like a legit heavy duty thing. I even went to the extent of keeping the garage floor completely wet so it trapped any particles and just got the same result. So the way I found to fix this was to spray closer to the body to get a thicker coverage. The only problem with that then is that you risk drips and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I managed to correct most of the big ones but there are still some places where it's obvious. <laughs> anyway, I got the guitar to as good a finish as I thought I could possibly do, clear coated it and then I've just chalked it up to experience. I've got another couple of projects lined up and I don't think I'm going to be spraying a metallic if I'm honest. <laughs> now though, I'm excited because this is the bit I've been waiting for. Getting the hardware in and being so close to playing the thing felt so good. Starting to see it actually become a guitar again and not just a spread piece of wood is always awesome but I wasn't out of the woods yet. The Tone Pro studs were a fraction of a millimetre too small and were loose, so I did something I wouldn't advise, but it's my guitar, so it's okay. I super glued them in. Usually I'd wrap them, but I wanted to move fast, and I'm sure I won't be changing this setup anytime soon. Feel free to call me an idiot in the comments. Then I got the tuners on, started to fit the pickups, and my camera batteries died. <laughs> But I carried on working. The EMG solderless kit is an absolute godsend, but fitting it all in the cavity of an SG is a little bit of a squeeze. Also, the pots are really long, too long for a thin top like on this SG, so I think I've probably made a mistake. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can get a kit with shorter pots, probably, but this is what I ordered, this is what I've got, so I decided to make it work. And in this case, it was super simple. I added an extra nut and a washer to shorten the available length of the pot. You've got to love a simple solution. And now, after new strings and a setup, the guitar is finally complete. I think we should probably check it out. Dudes, it's finally done. What do you think? After all the different things that went wrong putting this guitar together, I think it paid off. I was always going for like a classy look with a bit of attitude and I think I pulled it off even though it's not perfect. But that's what makes it cool. It's got a story and it taught me a load about modifying guitars. Plus, it sounds awesome and I think it looks great as well. I've got a strong feeling that this is going to get tons of playtime. The plain neck as well is so good, even after so much sanding. You'll have obviously seen that I didn't tongue oil it in the end, that's for good reason. I'm not totally convinced that this would have absorbed all the oil if I did try and finish it like that. The last thing I want is a patchy finish after all that work. As it turns out though, this is more than good enough for me. It feels exactly how I wanted it to. So what would I have done differently? Even though it was massively complicated, honestly not a lot. Obviously I would have sprayed with a flat colour. I love this gold and I think it looks great but the amount of work that went into it because I didn't really know what I was doing was just too much. It dragged the length of getting this guitar done out by so long. Also I tried to get fancy and put like this gold band here to cover up the sanding line and I don't think it looks that good. <laughs> If I want to fix it at some point, I can, but at this point, it doesn't really bother me that much. Overall, I got tons out of building this guitar purely through facing the problems that I did with it. It gave me an opportunity to learn as I went, and even though it's frustrating, you've got to be happy with that. Otherwise, though, I'm really happy with the result, and I'm super eager to get onto the next project, which hopefully won't be quite as complicated. <laughs> Now, I want you to tell me whether you think I saved this guitar or ruined it further. Drop your answers in the comments. Be honest, it's all personal opinion and I really want to know what you think. Also, I will be stoked to hear any of your guitar modding tips, so leave them down there as well. Finally, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch an idiot like me talk about guitars. 
I really do appreciate you all. And if you want to hear me talk about another quality Epiphone, then you can click this video right here.